It's Lucy on the Beat. Today, I am joined by Jessica Seinfeld. Hello, Jessica. Hi, Lucy. I'm holding up your new book. I'm so excited. It's called Vegan at Times. And what's so great about that is you take the pressure off. We don't have to be vegan all the time. We can be plant-based or vegan sometimes. Tell me about the idea and the concept for this book. Well, I think um, this idea that we have to be perfect at everything um, is obviously unattainable. And I think we're all feeling post-pandemic, like very grateful for what we have and uh, very aware of what people don't have. And mental health has become a big, big, big uh, thing finally that's we've been able to talk about more freely. And I think um, shame is a big conversation. And um, I have this thing around shame and food. I just, I hate the way people talk to each other about food on social media and in the world and how we're just constantly shaming people about what they do and don't eat. And so, um, you know, over the past few years, I've been um, on this exploration of plant-based eating. Uh, for health reasons and also for the planet, for animals, and obviously for my own body. And um, I started eating less meat and started eating less dairy and I felt better, um, but I knew I wasn't going to easily get my family on board. So I just started doing it myself and making little meals um, for myself while I make them a regular dinner. And um, that was fine for me. I didn't I didn't want to make any grand statements or, or bold proclamations to anyone because I know my family's like, oh God, what's she going to do now? Uh, so I just, yeah, I kind of started that way. You know, what's so interesting about your book and what I love is, you know, you can just have a smoothie. You know, it's pretty simple. I mean, a lot of people worry that there's a lot involved or that they have to give up all their favorite foods, but you know, you have these quesadillas, which are broccoli and vegetables, and they look absolutely delicious. All the food looks so good. You talk about a pasta that your husband likes, which is just a plain, you know, tomato sauce pasta. I think what's so nice is you kind of simplify it and bring it down to earth and make it so accessible for people who don't want to make this big proclamation, as you said, like who just want to eat more plant-based, be healthier, help the planet, help animals and not make some big statement about like, I'm vegan, which is really intimidating. So it's in, in yeah, thank you. Um, it's intimidating. And it's also, you know, um, there have been these standards set as, you know, I guess there should be when you're creating a ideology or a, an idea behind something. Um, but I think that maybe the approach many vegans have taken is so strict and militant that it's turned a lot of people off and made people feel, oh, I'm destined for failure here. So why bother trying? And, you know, I guess my, my take on it is like, if we're all eating less meat and we're all eating less dairy and we're building the infrastructure around more plant-based eating, um, hopefully our planet will fare better and our bodies will fare better and certainly animals will fare, fare better. So, um, you know, I think that there are people who are upset that um, this idea of veganism, veganism has been, you know, somehow diluted by the idea that you can't, you don't have to be perfect. But I guess in life, I just don't know what do we do that we have to be perfect at, that we're ultimately successful at. Right, I mean, like- I, I love your title. Just so you know, Vegan at Times tells me it's not a binary equation. Like I can eat vegan some of the time or plant-based as I call it, I call it plant-based. But it's so interesting. Like I love the chocolate chip ice cream. It shows you can have treats and you don't have to sacrifice what you really love, like chocolate or, you know, delicious desserts or- you know, whether it's a brownie or a crumble. And one of the things I, I really think it, there's this weird sort of parallel between electric cars and eating plant-based. And the reason I say that is because the very first electric cars were sort of a compromise. You couldn't have your SUVs or your trucks. And now everything's going electric. You know, luxury cars are going electric and we're all going to eventually not put gas in our cars. We're eventually going to put electricity in our cars and our grandchildren are going to think that's hilarious that we once had gas 
Same thing with plant-based. It's like, what was a novelty when the Impossible Burger or Beyond Burger came out in 2016? People were like, I want to try that. That sounds so weird. And now it's becoming sort of half of what we eat. And I think eventually it's going to become pretty much all of what we eat. And I feel like we're standing at this weird precipice where we can look back at how our grandparents ate and we can look forward at how our grandchildren were eat. And we can see both. We can see like the traditional recipes, but your book is so unique because you're taking 120 recipes for everyday occasions and saying, you know what, guys, you can have these and they're plant-based. And I think that's such an eye-opener for so many people. They didn't know they could have everything they want to eat and it happens to be plant-based. Well, I knew I was going to get my family on board um, with, you know, piles of greens, um, you know, that, that my, my, my kids and my husband love traditional foods and comfort foods. And so um, kind of like I've done with all of my books, I just remake your family favorites into one that's either healthier um, or in the can't cook book, my third book, you know, easier to make. And in this book today, plant-based. So like my, our macaroni and cheese is completely plant. Every, every recipe in the book is plant-based, but you know, I guess originally I never would have thought that I would like macaroni and cheese that's vegan better than I would a regular macaroni and cheese, but this one just makes you feel so much better when you're done. And you so you don't feel logy. Well, let me ask you, what do you eat in a day? What's a typical day of eating for Jessica Seinfeld? Mm, let's see. In the morning, I'll have coffee, of course. I've started adding this. Somebody sent me some MCT oil, which I'm very new to, and it gives me so much energy. I'm like, who am I? Um, and then for breakfast, I will have um, I love oatmeal. I just love oatmeal with oat milk and some berries. And honestly, you know, I, I cook a lot of the days. And so it's kind of whatever we're testing. I don't have like a, a set lunch, but recently I've been getting the vegan crunch salad at Chopped, which is something I just launched with them. And it's so good. And even my kids who, you know, are definitely reticent to <laughs> be part of anything that their mom is doing. Um, even they love it. So I feel well, like- Thank you for that. You sent me one. I split it with my husband. We both decided it was the best thing we've had all week because it has a little bit of spice and it's- It's very spicy. Sauce. The, the salad dressing is enough for a week. So thank you very much. We're still using that delicious salad dressing. But, Great. but tell me about dinner. I mean, I'm looking at recipes like this thinking, I want to make the rigatoni and it looks so good. And it yeah. doesn't look like a quote unquote compromise. It looks like something I would- think is creamy and delicious. Yeah. I mean, that's the, I think the, the, for me, the key is to make it about recipes that my family will eat and how do I make them better, healthier and easy to make for other people. And, and I think your first book I remember was, you know, sneaking in, you know, let's say kale into the brownies. And I thought that was so brilliant because I had little kids at the time and they really didn't like greens. So that was brilliant. What I think is so great about your books is you do acknowledge that women are trying to feed their family healthy meals, but a lot of times we also don't want those meals to be rejected. You know, we don't want them to say, mom, forget it. We're just not going to eat this. We're going to go out for fast food. But I do think that what you've got here is a book that, you know, you can make these recipes for your family and they are going to think this is a treat. It's not a compromise. They're, they're going to love these. Yeah. My, my, my kids and my husband can't tell half the time. I never advertise what's in them. Just like I never advertise what's in my, you know, brownies with spinach or my chicken nuggets with broccoli. Um, I just think, why do we have to talk about the ingredients all the time? That, that throws people off. And so, you know, just half the time my family's eating something they would have eaten anyway. It's just, I made it plant-based. How did you learn to cook? You're such a good cook. Oh, thank you. Um, my mom and my grandmother. And then I worked in kitchens all through high school and put myself through college working as a waitress or a dessert maker or a salad maker um, in different restaurants. So what advice would you give somebody who wants to be more plant-based but isn't really sure how to start? Oh, that's a great question. Well, buy vegan at times because we have a great pantry guide. And um, there's so many wonderful resources on the internet now, which is, uh, you know, really helpful and how to, 
but um, my book is a great place to start because there are recipes that you'll recognize and, and say, okay, I can do this. Um, and not set yourself up for failure, not, not say, okay, I'm a hundred percent doing this and going out and grocery shopping and buying all the ingredients at what time, one time and saying, this is how I am now. Like to me, unless you're a cold Turkey person, I know so few of those, mm -hmm. but start with, you know, a very reasonable set of guidelines for yourself. Like today I will eat breakfast and lunch, no meat or dairy. And then tonight I'm going out to dinner with my friends and I know I really like the steak and fries at that restaurant. So I'm going to get that. And then just every week, try to taper off. And then if you need that piece of pizza with a hunk of mozzarella on it, go for it. Just start over the next day. Right. It's exactly right. I love that advice. I mean, just do the best you can every day. And we've done stories at the beat that show your health benefits, even if you go part, part of the way, right? If you take a little bit of saturated fat out of your diet, or you take a little bit of that, you know, dairy and meat out of your diet, you're going to see your cholesterol come down if, you, if that's a worry, or you're going to see, you know, benefits in terms of energy. And uh, my skin cleared up. I don't know about you, but I didn't realize that dairy was something I might've been slightly allergic to. And when I got rid of it, it, I got no inflammation. My bad knee felt less creaky. I don't know. Everything just felt better, but who knew? Wait, I ask everybody. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear you're feeling better. Yeah, thank you. Well, it turns out a lot of people have low level lactose intolerant, but don't know it. Well, I mean, all this stuff that's going into our soils and going into the feeds for these animals cannot be good for us. All these chemicals cannot be good for us. So it's I just, it's interesting you say that, you know, the way we farm in America is different than, in yeah, I'll go our food go. source is so tainted. Anyway, yeah, that's a whole other food. conversation. Yeah. But you can eat the same food in Europe and not feel that bloating, not feel that same puffy or loginess. It's true. But that's why your book is so helpful because you're basically saying, do the best you can. And also, if you take cheese out of the equation and have your pasta without it, maybe you feel better. Maybe that's a way to find out that you're gonna feel better without dairy. Um, I ask everybody, do you have a mantra? I love to hear people's mantras. Any kind of words you live by, self-script? Yeah, I really have tried um, over the past couple of years to recognize that people are really struggling and that the maybe the way they act towards you or their behaviors are confusing, but it means they're struggling with something. And I just take nothing personally, take nothing personally. People are fighting many battles internally, externally, and, um, you know, what you perceive as a slight or what you perceive as, uh, you know, negativity towards you is not personal. I love that. That's really helpful because I think after the pandemic, it's been a really tough time for people to come out of that. You were always the most empathetic human with Baby Buggy. Mm -hmm. You launched this wonderful charity to give back to moms who needed, you know, the resources and what, what, every mom needs to raise a child. And I think that a lot of what you've done has helped other women kind of navigate the tough, you know, those friction points in life, going back to work and having a child and eating healthy and putting healthy food on the table. So I think that it's all of a piece. Your career seems very much about helping other people. And I just think this book is going to really help other people. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I am, uh, here to problem solve. I feel like I, um, you know, my mom was a social worker and I started my organization 20 years ago last week. Um, we changed the name to the Good Plus Foundation because we grew so much to help not just mothers and children, but fathers as well. And I was having a hard time fundraising around baby. Um, so fathers really helped broaden our, um, you know, our programs and our, our fundraising. So um, anyway, it's called the Good Plus Foundation. And I really look at everything in my life through the lens of the parents in our programs. And so I know what it's like for them to come home after a really long day of two or three jobs, commuting, picking their kids up from daycare, um, and trying to put a meal on the table if they're lucky enough to have the resources to even get food. And so our, our families are really struggling in all sorts of ways. And so, um, 
you know, and when I was 18, I, I had my own caseload or 19, actually in college, my sophomore year of college, I had a caseload of women, my own age, all of whom, um, at the probation and parole office where I went to college and they all had young children. And I was really privileged to be in college and, and, and learning how I could help them. And that experience stayed with me forever. And, and it's wow. really, yeah, like why I do what I do at Good Plus Foundation. That's really my full-time job. And, and being creative and uh, as a, and a problem solver around food for people is, is my goal. Like, I don't want to be a famous TV, uh, TV person around food. I don't want to be a famous person around our food. I just want to help people if they're trying to get their kids to eat healthier, if they're trying to learn how to cook for the first time, or if they're struggling in any way and they feel like ashamed or they have failed around being able to kind of tap into this, uh, I'd say life skill that we all kind of need to take care of ourselves and our families. Yeah, and I think cooking is, is something that we should all know how to do. So you have just made it so much easier for everybody to practice self-care and take care of their families and eat plant-based. So thank you so much for this and thanks for your time today. And um, everyone should go out and get vegan at times and buy it for their friends as a holiday gift because this is going to change people's lives. So thank you, Lucy. Jessica, so and have a great weekend and thank you for everything. And so thank I'll you. link up and make sure that we get vegan at times in front of everybody. You're the best. Thank you so much. This is yeah. great. Take great, care. Great.